to In the Green Room. I'm Kinga. And I'm Chad. And this is Martin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We have Sam. a special guest, two special guests. Sam Pillsbury. Hi, that's me. And I'm Richard not that special. Richard Betts. Guy, this guy's much more special. <laughs> well, it's me. kind of uh, my, your oh, uh, birthday know. episode. So we figured. Happy birthday to me. What that's better right. way to celebrate your birthday <laughs> than bringing Sam in with some of his uh, fantastic no. wines? Uh, He's a true artist, the way he crafts his wine. So well, and a we'll pioneer to hear about his in process. Arizona wine, like you I'll were... agree. I'll agree that I'm a pioneer. I'm not so sure making wine is an art, but but thank you. Very much. <laughs> oh, it's, it's a total art. But, but, but you've, you've been I've doing st- this a while. I broke pretty new ground a long 20, yeah, 23 yeah. years you were ago. you were one of the first people here growing <laughs> yeah. grapes if not the first right yeah. well, and it's my favorite was the first. Ken, Ken Callaghan, Ken was Callaghan the preceded me in Sonoida which Bastard. is about an hour and a half no, no, no. <laughs> I, just oh, no, he's great. I, he's, I apologize you know not. <laughs> this industry <laughs> wouldn't funny. be anything without Ken he bought, Callaghan he's the man right? he, bought, he bought grapes for me this year I mean he's, a, he's yeah. an amazing wow. person well I, I deeply apologize so should we do a future show with you and him together someday uh, he, he might not want to drive all this way for something. We where does he live? It's on Sonoida. So we'd have oh, to yes. we'd have to okay. go down there because we we still have to figure out our you our can mobile. Do, you can our do mobile. mobile. You've got the equipment. Yeah, we've got the That's equipment. Right. We, we gotta, can do a mobile we, and show. And I I desperately want to see your your That's stuff down. That's there. the way do, to do, do it. Do you thing. have a, a little mini hotel for us to stay at? No, <laughs> but there's a whole bunch of places. And, <laughs> you could, no, no you Wilcox has a ton of motels and stuff. It's oh, yeah. Wilcox Town is 14 miles from. Stay at the Rum Line. You know, I'll just rent a really nice RV. Yeah, no, Rumline has some really nice cars. That's it. You can do that too. RV it. Just do RV it. Chet, you RV it all the time. Do you recommend that? Um, I've not RV'd all the time. I've only stayed in an RV once. <laughs> well, that's where these random rumors you, come you, from. You, you had this opportunity. You have a great reputation. You just blew it. Tune in next RV. week for oh, well, uh, Chetty's I don't want to be known for being an RVer. I'm not a big fan. <laughs> otherwise, know, otherwise known as trailer trash. <laughs> Wait a minute. You went on that show with Rachel, and then what about Burning Man? Oh, Rachel went. No, you didn't yeah. go. Okay, Rachel went. Oh, so now Rachel's the expert because she yeah. went to Burning Man in an RV. Got it. <laughs> Got it. So Sam Pillsbury's here. And, and, and left, too. Think? And left, yeah. She got <laughs> out, which Actually makes her an extra. Absolutely. Oh, that's right. And she had a good time. So what are we tasting? Because my glasses, oh, yeah, my glasses have to be Leave so it to King Get to get I, right I to brought, the table. I brought... I brought... I, normally when I come here, I've been here a bunch of times, I'll bring wines that are really easily available because I'm kind of, oh, these wines are not easily available. Favorite. These are very fine wines ah. that, are, that are hard to get a hold of and I'm going to give you oh my goodness. A, little, a little... Is it because trick. it's my birthday? Probably because it's your birthday. Mind if I pour it while you talk? No, so the show title will be King's Birthday Party. Just do that much. That's with good. Sam yes, Pillsbury. Yeah. Okay, so Viognier. Do you know, you know about Viognier? Right? It's my favorite grape. It's a it's it's a Rhone variety. Um, I I think it could I think it's classified as an aromatic, isn't it? Certainly. It's it's definitely not a big Certainly. aromatic. It's a delicate aromatic. Yes. Yeah. I I it was the first Rhone white I ever <clears throat> met, and I fell in love with it. Well, that was in Cannes. Was that in France? I'm surprised that you can grow right? Viognier oh. in Arizona. Is it Viognier makes, a, makes no difference. It doesn't. It makes no okay. difference. You can grow. Something it depends on where you are, but you can. There's almost any grape on the planet you could grow somewhere in Arizona. You can't make generalizations. Okay. okay. Yeah. No, no, I, just, just, I just say no, 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 no. Inter- the, the, yeah, our, yeah. our terroir um, just loves Rhone varieties. I. That's why. That's why my wine glasses have a horse on them. Mm-hmm. That's a Rhone horse. Oh, and it's a, okay. and it's a play on words. That's why the label has there. It horse is Rhone horse. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I, I mean, I'm speaking from ignorance. I've never been to the Rhone. Is it a dry kind of arid region? Or I, I know you've it's, talked it's, about the the the. the the weather in Wilcox is very different than what I'm used to. No, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's, I don't know about the rainfall in the Rhone, but it's not a wet area. That's for, for okay. sure, you know. And, and if you look at the ground underneath any pictures of any Rhone vineyards, it's either, it's either sand or rock. Rock. So it's dry. Uh, it's dry. Okay. It's dry. Well, and, all right. So that makes sense can, that that would grow here. Could we say this is crisp and clean and maybe dry? It's, it's, it's totally, it's a, definitely dry. There's no residual oh, sugar yeah, in any of my wine. Yeah, no, 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 the no, Rhone no, Valley no, is not a dry place. It's not an arid place. It's, so pretty, VNA, it's pretty close to Africa, though. I mean, they one of the one of the prevailing um, things that affect the fruit there is the mistral. Yes. Um, and so, and that comes from Africa. What is know. the mistral? Mistral is these spring, very, very strong spring winds that blow. Okay. And they are a total nightmare. And guess what? We get them too. And they <laughs> blow all the shingles off your house. And they, <laughs> well, yeah, they, yeah. They, they blow down your shade sails. 
But you know what they do that is so cool? They blow away mold spores yeah. and a whole lot, they do? Of, a yeah. whole lot of predatory insect species. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, so they basically purif purify the terroir. So they're a freaking the blessing. Smell. So I was yeah. double checking, and you sound good. So okay, okay that's good. Okay. Um, so so there are some parallels, but the thing about Arizona that's so interesting. The first thing is it's delicious. Pe by the way, oh, this is a it's it's scrumptious. This, I love it. This is a wine. That's, well, it's also very different from other vignettes that I've had. Um, there's there's definitely a little uh, acid. There's some there's I, some I earthy taste notes. Definitely very tropical. Very tropical. It's. I don't know. It's similar but different, right? <laughs> well, I, I make white wines on a very small scale, very high labor mm -hmm. and intense, Lovely. and um, pretty much different from almost the way everybody else does them. The first thing, the first two things you're going to get is the effect of UV. Okay. Because at forty-five thousand feet, you're getting forty percent more UV. Forty-five hundred feet. I'm sorry, 45,000 <laughs> 45, feet is a 747. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, how'd you get above Mount Everest? <laughs> <laughs> you could drink at 45,000 feet, but not make wine. Okay. That's how you're going to feel once you drink his wine. But, 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 but what I'm now. These two things come together about Viognier and what you said about Arizona. Arizona, you can't generalize about it, except there's, there's two things that are really interesting. The first thing is that for two decades, everybody who was told that I was growing wine grapes in Arizona, uh, thought I was a fucking idiot. <laughs> well, you're not. And, you're genius. And and um, and it's funny. Cheers to it, genius. It's, it's funny when people are making a wine. People do Pillsbury, that. Sam Pillsbury, <laughs> Sam Pillsbury, we love you. And, they'll, and, they'll, <laughs> and these people will say it to their face. I mean, literally, come up to me and say, "You you are a fucking idiot. No, how how could you possibly? Wh what do you think you're doing growing wine grapes in the Arizona desert? Okay." Couple of things. All Vitis vinifera originated in the desert in southeastern Anatolia and Turkey. They like the desert. They don't like fertile soil. Secondly, and most people still don't know this or realize it or understand it, the only way you can grow wine grapes in Arizona is to go quite high altitude. You've got to start at a bottom at three and a half thousand feet. Right. Okay? And you can go up to five and a half. It depends on where you are. There are mm -hmm. places where you can be at 6,000 feet and it's okay because the frost doesn't sit there and there's places, you know, it just depends. So you know, all the, all the terroir, terroir for growing wine grapes is specific and different to it. Something, but where we are, we're at 40, 43 and a half thousand feet above sea level. We get about 40% more UV than most vineyards in the world. And endless sunshine during the day. So we don't have a struggle ripening the fruit like right. you do in France. Right, right. But it drops 30 to 40 degrees at night, so everything stops, so it doesn't ripen too quickly. And the longer the grapes hang, the more complex and interesting the wine's fruit's going to be. You Is that why it's so tropical? Um, that's partly it. But there's two other things. Though. The way we make it now is a whole other thing. <clears throat> um, this tastes like it's got pretty good acid. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, it could cut through okay. cheeses. This, I mean, oh, right? the, you know what you want? This is, like... This is made to go with pan fried scallops. Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Like, Chet, yeah, that's your favorite. This yeah. has more scallops. acid than your average Viognier, for sure. Okay, now, yeah, now some of that. There you go. Yes. No, yes. But yes. Some of that is perception. I'll tell you what okay. it is. The, the, the soil in the water in Arizona is not very high in acid, it's quite high in pH. Right, right. it's very right. alkali, right? Right, so yes. So the issue is when you make the wine, it's going to wind up being a bit flabby. Okay. Flabby, describe that. Without acid. So, sort yeah. of without acid, oh, okay. sort of soft and kind of yeah. likable. But, no but, but, okay. but, but, um, I say tendency. It depends on a whole bunch of things. So, so it depends. But, but what we do to compensate for that is we inhibit all the whites from going through malolactic fermentation, which is a secondary fermentation where things get kind of luscious and a bit mm, slutty, yeah. okay? So, slutty. <laughs> so, slutty. Well, you know, easy it. easy to... I love slutty. a promiscuous wine. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell you right now. We have a wine called promiscuous. <laughs> uh, yeah, remember, there we go. Remember we did a show That's right. with the salacious. Yeah, I was trying to be funny yeah. and I... <laughs> so, so what so what we do is we, we barrel ferment and stainless steel in neutral oak, which is oak barrels mm -hmm. that don't have any oak flavor left, to keep them clean. And then we inhibit malolactic fermentation, so they don't go second through secondary fermentation, and it just makes them kind of crowd pleasing, but not very interesting. Right. You know, sort of. Sort how, of how do you inhibit? How do you stop that from happening? Uh, uh, a little bit of a dose of SO2, or just temperature. Just drop the temperature right down. Gotcha. And, then, and, and the SO2 is sulfur, right? Yes. And that's uh, very common, and it's. Uh, Sulfur does a very interesting things to. Uh, well, sulfur dioxide is—it's it, actually. Uh, um, 
not not an antiseptic, but it stops. It, yeah, but yeah, more or yeah, less. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, and like the word organic, it's a it's a term that people misread quite often. Uh, Having a little bit yeah. of SO two in your mind is not bad for you. SO two oh, is no, naturally no. occurring. Absolutely. It's everywhere it's in our body. Right, needs uh, it. right what, out of the earth, we need it. What happens is when somebody has mass produced a bunch of really shitty wine mm -hmm. and they're really scared it's going to go off, they dump a bu whole bunch of SO two in it, and that makes you it doesn't taste good and it makes you feel sick. So. so just having SO2 in your wine doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, it's how you handle that. Right, you know? right. And so don't panic if it's not organic? <laughs> well, well, you you don't really know. I mean, in actual fact, in the winemaking business, more or less, and this is changing, more people are going organic now. I mean, we've been organic for years, but mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't want to be you don't certified. Pay I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. Shit. But it's, yeah. or, but yours is organic. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're, but, you're growing better than organic. I would yes. guess. Yes, very possibly. But the the thing is, what's happened in the businesses for many years, people would buy a bunch of. They'd go to some like really shitty vineyard that wasn't managed properly, mm -hmm. but had never been sprayed with anything, and they'd make wine from it, and they could call it organic, and it didn't taste any good, but it was yeah. organic, and that was a way of selling it. Yeah. So, so a lot of yeah, your top Napa Valley wineries um, have got are making or, w organic wines, but they don't, they, they haven't had mm -hmm. a tendency to promote it because it, it's given wine a bad reputation amongst the conoscenti. Okay. Well, the ones that have actually said organic on the bottle, I've tasted, and I haven't really liked. A lot of them are not I don't know very why. good. Because, well, that's their only selling point, you know. So, so. <laughs> well, well, I, if it you, says organic on the bottle, that means no added sulfites. Uh -huh. Okay. No, no, uh -huh. sulfites are different. Sorry, those are two different well, things. Yes. Well, if it's I know, but we're oh, just talking okay. about sulfites. What? Sulfite is is a preservative. Yeah, but that's got nothing to do with organic. Everything on the planet has sulfites in it. Okay, so right. you, you can't say well, wine you itself. Can't, when you, when you ferment wine, one of the products. Okay, so tell is, us what it means. Sulfite. What does it mean? You can't say no sulfites. You can only say no added sulfites. That's what I said. Yeah. Just okay. said okay. no okay. added. If you buy it, it says organic. Some of these wines, they'll say no added sulfites. So you're saying now, that even if it says no between, added sulfites, there might still be some sulfites. There's a no, difference no. Yes, between course. organic yeah. wine no, it, and it's it's and naturally it, occurring. It's mm -hmm. everywhere. It's on your fingernails, you know? Really? Uh, yeah. All right, I have yeah, to back yeah. up a second. Okay. You said the words Congo Shente? Congo Shente. I, I Congo don't Shente. know what that the, is. The people of, of the knowledgeable people. Yes. People of the knowledgeable uh, people. Don't you know? Thank you. Okay. Congo I did teach English literature. And, and, and I, my, my wife <laughs> is an English major, and I appreciate that, so that's why I wanted to stop oh, and I make thought... sure that I understood that everything you say, because... I, you, you like to th you throw these words out, and I I pretty have a pretty good vocabulary, but there some of those are a little but, bit beyond me. So I want to make sure. Do you have a summa cum laude master's degree? I don't. <laughs> exactly. There we go. I Did don't. you hear that chat? I don't. Summa cum laude. But I have school of hard knocks. No, 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 no of course, much more important. Way, way much more. I so don't Sam, think how did you ever in... taken it out of an envelope? So <laughs> Sam, for the people that haven't seen the show before and they don't know who you are, can you give us a little bit of background, a little bit of history about you? I was born in New England. When I was five and a half, my family moved to St. Croix. Um, one of our family friends was living there. He's known as the father of the atomic bomb. Really? Yes. Oh my okay. goodness. Okay. Wow. And he always wow. wore this big long coat. I think he was always grieving or something. <laughs> right. I mean, I was only little, so you know. Well, yeah, yeah. Right. But I knew, what he, I knew what he was, I knew what it That's, what, uh... What's his name? Oppenheimer. Yes, Robert Oppenheimer. What was Oppie? Oppie? Oppie. You were hanging Oppie. with Oppie? Family friend. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. I never knew that. And, wow. then, and then I, my family, my father was not in the military. But my family moved all over the East Coast of the United States, um, Pennsylvania, Chesapeake Bay, Massachusetts. When I was 13, my father decided that he wasn't moving far enough, so we decided to immigrate <laughs> to New Zealand. <laughs> Did you watch the different. new uh, Christopher Nolan film about Oppenheimer, or no? I haven't seen it yet. I've been too busy doing it. Was good. It was good. Oh, no, 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 no. Well made. oh no, I know it's, it's very I, well. We, made. I only finished picking on Thursday last yeah, week, so right. I'll, I'll don't. Yeah, it was a. Well, yeah, if you had seen it, this year, right? if you had seen it, I wanted to ask if you not, thought in the end, not really. In fact, I think we, we picked, well, we let picked him the last it. food on the same day. This no year, year, kidding, because it seemed like a very different year. It was exact opposite. Mm -hmm. It rained and it was cool all last year. It never rained at all, and it was as hot as shit this year. <laughs> right, right. But back to your history. So okay. you, so, so I moved to New Zealand when I was thirteen, and probably the reason for this, one of them is the fact my parents were lushes. Is that, <laughs> is, we have a wine called Lush. I'm surprised that the liquor board let us get past that one past them because you know what it means. But anyway. Um, 
Um, but we went, you couldn't fly to New Zealand in 1960. Right, right, you had to be on a boat. So we, we went by ocean liner, and every really? night oh. there was a carafe of Chianti on the table. And you were 13 and, and you I drank. And I was 13, but we were on a boat. My parents were liberal, you know, yeah. as well as like, being alcoholic. Well, and, 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 and you said someday I'm going to be a wine anchor. No, I didn't. I just loved it. And I've always uh -huh. loved wine from that day on. I've just loved it. I loved holding the wine up to the light and seeing the light shine. I love that little buzz that you get. Yeah. I love the way it goes with food. And so mm. I've just always loved wine. Fine. I said, Make it. That's a proper upbringing. Yes, and when you right. were living in New Zealand, did you drink Sauvignon Blancs? Yes, and here's another funny thing. I'll tell you this funny story. Um, one, one of the, I only just realized this quite recently, but I, I've always known from tasting that wines in Arizona ripen differently from wines in other places, sure. and I didn't know what the reason was. Mm -hmm. And then growing cucumbers, I, re I realized that you have to peel cucumbers when you grow them in my garden because their skins are too thick, and I don't, I don't like doing that. Why are the skins thick? They're protecting themselves from the UV. Guess what they do to grape? Same thing. Berries. I was going to mention that. And guess Same what's thing. in guess what's skins. In guess what's in grape skins. Yeah. 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 Tell us what's result, in grape skins. Results. <laughs> results in yeah, all the... All, a lot of the really good things that are important. Apart yes. from tannins. And, tannins, so things that affect the, the flavor of the wine, the, the texture of the wine. The color, okay. right? Color, uh, oh, totally. Because, you know, all the, red all wine, all the pigment red gra skins, wine grapes have so, white yeah. juice in them. They're so not basically you're packing away all of this knowledge. Well, I'm learning all this stuff, but I'm still going by instinct because one of the reasons since I bought this land in this completely insane How many acres? 100 acres of land in Cochise County, which is a very, very high altitude mountain valley and down by the Mexican border. And yeah, like so I say, it could be considered the middle of nowhere, really. Oh, it's, yeah. Oh, no. Try right? getting getting anything. You know? <laughs> right. People, parts, you name it. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, but, but I had tasted this wine that had come from a, a, a vineyard. Near, a little vineyard near mine at the time. Okay. And it was a Chardonnay, and I never tasted anything like it in 20 Tell them who made that Chardonnay. Ken Kelly. Ken Kelly. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we're going back yeah. to this gentleman who uh -huh. lured you here. Uh, he didn't lure me, but I, he was one of the reasons that I came because of what he had done. He's, mm -hmm. he's, what How old is Ken Callaghan? Is he like in his hundreds or oh, 90s? Oh, no, no, he's no, younger he's, than me. He's, he's, like, he's like 50, Ken. maybe. Yeah. 55. Oh, wow. 50. So he, okay. he had a, a, a spark and a passion at a very young age. He was discovered by Robert Parker in the mid-90s. Wow. In the, the mid-90s. In the mid-90s, he called, Robert, Robert Parker, Parker called him one of the... 10 or 15 up and coming winemakers in the United States. Really? Yeah. And he landed in. He landed in Sonoma. No. That's where he was growing up. And great. I'm telling wow. you, in the mid 90s, there were only, I mean, you could count on one hand the number of wineries. There were a bunch of wineries, but there weren't, there weren't any good, and his was one. And he only started making wine in 90. Wow. Or 91 or 92, you know, because wow. he, I think he and his parents planted their first vineyard in 89. Mm -hmm. but I came. I, I came yeah. along um, in like two thousand. Yeah, later, yeah, yeah. So just a few. But years But yeah, to, well. and then to have Robert Parker praise Kent Callaghan in like ninety five. Mm -hmm. You know, this was maybe his third or fourth vintage. You know, from a place like Arizona, that's amazing. That's incredible. That is oh, amazing. That's amazing. extraordinary. So, that is so I was in the middle of explaining something about UV. That's right. UV. Yes. So, so anyway, so I I planted in. I basically came down because of the taste of this wine. I bought 100 acres and planted 14,000 grapevines. Talk about having faith in you. Wow. Yeah, wow. no kidding. And, um, That's not, that yeah, even that, back then, that and, could have been and cheap. And you had no knowledge of how to make wine, but you or just figured grapes. it out. No, I figured it out. So, wow. So, so Sam, tell them tell why wow. that wine impressed you so much. I'm ready for something more. Well, I, I'm, it's yeah, actually okay. part of the okay, story yeah, I'm going to yeah. tell. because so, so what happened was, I, I normally I, I use about half of my grapes for myself, and I sell the rest. And... And my um, people who buy grapes from me always give me the numbers that they want the grapes to come in at. And they always want the grapes picked a lot riper mm -hmm. than what I pick my grapes right. at. And I didn't pick my grapes according to the book because I didn't read the book. Mm -hmm. I, I picked them according to how I tasted the right. fruit. Right, you picked the fruit, you put it in your mouth, yeah. you're like, oh, that's not ripe yet. And then yeah. I tested <laughs> it as well to make sure. And I always knew it was well below. Like mm -hmm. really, 23 and a half bricks instead of 25. I mean, it's yeah. substantially less ripe. And I would get into these conversations with, with clients and they would say, you you can't pick so hot at 23 and a half bricks. The phenolics won't have had a chance to develop. And I'm going, I don't even know what phenolics is. <laughs> but I know my friggin' Syrah tastes amazing and is getting all these metals. So so I, it's the weirdest thing. So here am I going completely by blind instinct. And then about six months ago, I'm re I, I read stuff online. So I, I, this article about, about UV. And it was a really big study of a massive study over a period of about 10 years. 
And one of the things they discovered was that extra UV causes the phenolics in grapes to develop much earlier. Oh, so, that, so that mm -hmm. what you can do right. is you can make a fully flavored wine that's not picked at high sugar, so it's not high in alcohol. Mm -hmm. So it becomes more like a more like a French wine in a way. So so um, b because the more sugar there is, the higher the alcohol is going to be. And I don't I don't mostly people who really like wine don't want. F f 15% alcohol, you know, there's really right. great French mm -hmm. wines out there that are 10 or 11%. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Not, if, if you see a French wine with 14.5% on the label, it was made for the American market. <laughs> <laughs> that's a fact. All right, that's a fact. Right. There's even a tax break. Mm -hmm. So, um, Interesting. So, so, and then I read more, as I was reading more of this, I was like, okay, so here's the science that's proving what I've always known, but I didn't know what the evidence for mm -hmm. it was. And, um, and it goes on, it says, there's a, one other place on earth where this happens a lot. Guess where that is? New Zealand. Uh, Interesting. Okay. Do you know why? Why? Because there's a very thin ozone layer over New Zealand and there's no pollution. So all the wine grapes in New Zealand are getting more UV. More bombarded. More yeah. UV. And so maybe this style that I have, which mm -hmm. I love so much, also comes from the fact that I grew up drinking New Zealand white wines, and mm -hmm. that was the style that most oh, of them were. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I came and started to do on my own here, but <laughs> totally different. So when you pick a grape and you're tasting it, you taste it like every day for two weeks, or no, no, I'll do. How does I'll, it work? No, no, I'll sample. I'll sample. I'll, we have twelve or thirteen varieties. I'll sample every every two or three or four days. The, the different varieties, depending on the weather and what I'm seeing with my own eyes and things like that. So that, you know, because it's funny, I mean, it didn't happen this year because it didn't rain, and it didn't happen last year because it, wasn't, it rained all the time. Right. But what, it, what can happen is if your, your grapes are just sort of sitting there and you get a really good rain shower, and the next day it's as hot as crap, the sugars will shoot up. Mm -hmm. And that, it can catch you, you know. And you can deal with that by watering the, 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 the juice down. A lot of people do that, but that juice hasn't gone through the grapevine. It's mm -hmm. it's come from a well, and it has minerals and stuff in it, and I just don't like doing that, so I almost never do it unless we're in some sort of serious trouble, because right. I want it to be as, I want as much as possible for it to come mm -hmm. through the soil, from the, through, into the roots of the plant, through the through the vine, and into the grapes. Right. It's natural. You want natural yeah, yeah. So yeah. when you, when you're at a point where you pick the grape, you've tasted it, it tastes, it tastes where you want it, you've done the test and it's the right bricks do you automatically kind of know what it's going to taste like at the very end or is it an iterative process it, it's both i mean i know in terms basically what i'm aiming for i know how to get it in that right direction mm -hmm. but every every vintage can be a little different mm -hmm. and also you know it's really funny what the very interesting thing one and this is a ken, a ken, ken Callaghan story again one year i decided because because what i would sometimes do is i would I would sell four rows of a grape to one person and then mm -hmm. another four rows to someone else and they would come up with different numbers. So I thought, well, how do we, how do we make sure that not happens? So one year I had two half-ton bins on the trailer and all the pickers, I asked them, put your first bucket in the first bin and your second bucket in the second bin, okay? Mm -hmm. So that th there was no way that they weren't getting the same, right, the right, same right. stuff. They came up with different numbers. No kidding. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So it's a crapshoot. You know, so it's 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 row by row potentially. It's not even, it's 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 plant by plant. <laughs> wow. No, really, you know. Mm. So so it's it's you're it's very humbling. You're not as much in control as you like to be. <laughs> I mean, this year we had a, a bad frost one night. I lost fifty thousand dollars worth of fruit. Oh no! Yeah. Just one wow. night. It's called fun. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Bud break. You know. One year, Ken Callaghan last lost half his crop or three quarters of his three crop. Three years. Yeah, 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 hail. Yeah, hail. It looked uh, like someone had gone through the vineyard right with, with a machine time. gun. There was no yeah, leaves right. left on anything. Oh. Wow. So, so it's, you know what they do in, in Sonoida? They have a lot of hail there. They have, they have these nets now. When I first saw them, I thought they were bird nets because we use mm -hmm. nets to keep hail the birds off. They're hail nets. Yeah. So that yeah. save the whole crowd. Oh, yeah. they, they're, they're much heavier than bird nets, and they put yeah. them over the rows like that. So when the hail comes down, it'll just sort of. Oh, I've on. seen those. I wonder what yeah, those. No, I, I thought they I, were birds. Yeah. Yeah. No. I, not um, bad hail. Okay. We, wow. We've, we've never had a bad hail yet. Mm -hmm. because, again, it's farming. You know, you just it's literally. Yeah. yeah it's just, you don't work the farm. The farm works you. No. Right? You. 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 It's funny. 
Arizona, one of the things about Arizona that's weird is that we're, I think we're the only place on the planet where we have a monsoon at harvest time, and that's the one time you don't yeah. have yeah. Right, right, right. Oh, right. But I got to tell you, 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 can, you can't prepare for it. You've yeah. got to be ready for anything. Once again, we had, in three months, we had half an inch of rain here. Mm -hmm. The year before, it rained every day. Right. So you, all your, your spraying regimes, your, your um, um, vine care, mm -hmm. your, your bunch dropping, your foliage management, totally different. And if you don't do that, it all gets screwed up. Mm -hmm. So this was a change of careers because you were initially making movies, making movies, <laughs> and from New Zealand at 13 and enjoying wines and uh, drinking your parents' wines. Uh, how did you go to making movies? How did that happen? Well, it, and was, then to wine. it was the same as with wine. I mean, what, I, I was very fortunate. When I started high school in New Zealand, I had an English teacher, Bill Griffiths, mm -hmm. who loved food, loved wine, and loved movies. And he got me, you know, into, we would sit and watch those European movies with this black and white 16 mil projector mm -hmm. going rattle, 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 you know, with <laughs> wow. the screen. Yeah, and, yeah. Like that. and so I just love movies and mm -hmm. I love food and wine. And, and so I made movies for 40 years and then I decided I'd do food and wine, which is what we do now. But just because I like those things, that's all. What if you started doing Now, would you ever make a wine? movie on food and wine? Yes. What it, what about movie theaters with his wine? Well, I'll tell you something that that's come up quite often. I just think they're different activities. If you're mm -hmm. eating food while you're watching a movie, you're not watching the movie properly. I know uh, people like that. They <laughs> okay. do these dinners right, and they get right. served and everything like that. So they're drinking uh, I don't. and eating. I don't. No, no, no. I know. But I, I drink, but I do like to have a glass of wine. I'm friends with the, the Harkins, Dan and Karen Harkins, uh, I, I, and I do like to have a glass of wine. And they should have your wine at their I, theaters. Oh. No, I totally agree. Though every time I go to one of the theaters mm -hmm. that does the full dine in service, I get so distracted. It's, it's, yeah. It's, 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 I don't like it, and it's not. My yeah. dad was the worst of all those people. He would drink so much wine, he would fall asleep after. <laughs> you know? And and so no, I, I want to go to a movie. I want to mm -hmm. go to a movie. You know? So do you have any? Do you think you'll ever make a movie again, or have you retired from that? Completely? I don't really want to. I did mm -hmm. enough. I made. I must have made. How about I find the the documentary about? No, Sam but Pilgrim. it's funny. It's a different kind of work. I, right. That's what I was wondering. I, I, this... I, I, I probably made twenty documentaries, mm -hmm. maybe fifty commercials. But let's do one about movies, you. you know? It'd be funny. Well, you can make a movie about me, but I want. Okay. To okay. Let's, mm -hmm. let's do it. I mean, I get friends. It's really funny. I get. But I need you to be the actor. In it. Oh, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't want to write it, produce it, and direct it. Okay. And that's raise fair. The final okay. Part. Okay. That's we can fair. do it. Friends will send me a screenplay and say, "Would you have a look at my script?" And I go, "Okay." And then I, I, when I, look at the picture, I can't do this. <laughs> <laughs> nope. <laughs> because, because I don't know if you know this or not, but as an indie filmmaker, you spend 90% of your time pounding pavements trying to raise money mm -hmm. for it. And most of the time, you don't get any. Right. I spent way more time earning nothing as a, mm -hmm. as a filmmaker than I did making movies. Well, right. cheers to you making lots of Thank money you. Thank you. with oh, your yes. DNA. Yes. Because it's so delicious. And question, Sam, more. where else oh, can uh, yeah. DNA grow in the world? Oh, thank you, sir. For, here uh, in Arizona. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know, sweetie. I'm not a. Do you know that? Where else does Viognier? Yeah, he's the wine expert. Viognier? Yeah. yeah. Where, else <laughs> where else can it grow? Arizona and France and where else? No well, California. Yeah, totally. Okay. I've oh, yeah. even seen some from Oregon. Okay. You know, so, yeah. Um, wine will grow in very unexpected places, mm -hmm. uh, wine grapes. Yeah, I mean, what, what we do know is where I am right now, Cabernet and Pinot Noir don't really work. They're mm -hmm. not the best, you know, they're, they're not the stand the standout wines. Here. Well, your Guns and Kisses, what is that one? Cab that, been, that I oh, enjoyed, that and I've had a Pinot Noir I enjoyed, but they're not standout like the Rhone varietals or like uh, the Sangiovese or from, you know, which is an Italian right. variety. Italian varieties do really or, well. Um, I really like well, the Grenache. Your Grenache is Chateau Neuf de Pop. It's a Shiraz. Yeah, that's my I think this Viognier would go really well with a lot of appetizers, too. Oh, yeah. For sure. Oh, I love yeah. that. That's the yeah. current it's Tempranillo, the, the Spanish Same. grape. Oh, I love Tempranillo. Okay, so what Flourish is this costume here. store? And but some my really favorite... odd grapes like Tanat, you know, mm -hmm. which is this highly tannic grape from uh, from the small area in France. It rocks here. <laughs> it, has, it has a different character. Cheers, yeah. cheers. cheers. Um, so back to Sam's Wines and the one we're drinking. Where do we find this? Where can we buy it? You can buy it from our tasting you. rooms. You can order it online from us, and you can get it at some AJ's and... I think you can get it at Genuine. And where are all and, your And how much rooms? does it cost? I think yes. it's I think it's thirty five. Wow, it's retail. So delicious. And at the at a restaurant, it'll probably be fifty. Mm -hmm. And then some of your uh, it's more incredible. Uh, it is more popular wines. You can find at Total Wines. Total Wines. All Total Wines in Arizona yeah. have have our three 
wines that I will always make that'll be affordable because I don't want to become a snobby elitist piece of shit. And, and um, so the the wild child red, the wild child white, and the rosé are all twenty five bucks. Yeah, I just wanted to remind our listeners because there's a lot of total wines locations. Oh, yeah. AJs are harder to find. So but that's good that you remember that. Yeah. Have you been Have there, Bossa? Yeah. Uh, that okay. Costco deal, that, that one Costco. No, we place. used to sell a ton of wine to Costco, but they came up with this new thing that we can't get around, oh, which is they want a five million dollar liability policy, uh, and I can't afford that. Okay, so question: AJ's carries your wine. Most yeah. AJ's. Well, AJ's is different from Costco. Costco is all the same everywhere. Right. AJ's. The wines that are in an AJ's are chosen by the selling master of that store, so mm. it'll vary from from mm. store to store. But but you'll get higher end wines there, like Chardonnay and. And Viognier, for example. Well, because the one on Lincoln in uh, Scottsdale Road, when you ask them where are your Arizona wines, they really thump your wines, which is great. There they, is a local section. Yeah. I was the first. I was the first Arizona wine in there. I, I worked mm-hmm. on AJ's and Costco for a long time. And they have a nice display of your wine there. I don't know. I haven't. I haven't it's nice. The one on Lincoln in oh, Scottsdale Road. They, has it a depends great. again on the store, you know. Mm-hmm. So, how, how many tasting rooms do you have, and where are they? I have a, a small, very humble tasting room in a converted cottage down at the vineyard, sandwiched halfway between the vines and the winery. Mm-hmm. And we're open, um, it depends on the time of year, but we're open Saturday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. And, um, or you can go to our wonderful, sumptuous, yes. historic manor in Cottonwood, a 116 year old, three and a half thousand square foot house on two acres oh, wow. with a chef. A brilliant chef from mm-hmm. Abbey. And, Stunning place. And, and a so beautiful, cool. beautiful, huge building full of. So it's a full on menu or just some tasting? No, no, we don't, we, we don't want to do. When, when we mm-hmm. first opened with a chef, people started ordering dinner and I looked and I go, nah. I said, these people, they'll sit there for an hour and a half, they'll have a dinner, they'll have a, two glasses of wine and leave. Yep. We want you to have a snack and buy a case of wine and leave. Right, <laughs> right, right, right. right. Also, I don't want to own a restaurant right now. I, that's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, a that's a whole different thing. Mm-hmm. That, that, so, right. so we have appetizers yeah. or what do we say? We have dishes. Yeah, it's a great experience. There's three or four dishes all and the time. It's yeah, always changing. It's always fun and, and, and The food's creative. amazing. The well food's really amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's great. It's as awesome. good as any any restaurant in this country, the food there. We mm-hmm. have really? we have two chefs, and uh, the, uh, the originator has been with us for a long time, and she is a, a genius. Mm-hmm. Okay, when are we going there for my birthday? That's my birthday. Yeah. <laughs> and all of, you can get all of our wines there, too. Okay. And when are you going to be there? I go. I go every weekend or every other weekend. Okay. Okay. I, I might go this Saturday if I don't have to be at the vineyard. I'm not sure. Okay. Just, well, I'll, just call I me. I only want to go there when you're there. Oh, well, just call me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But well, I'll, I'll the staff is amazing. They've all, <laughs> They've all been. They all. I involve everybody in the harvest and the blending sessions. Mm-hmm. We spend days with the whole staff down there testing barrel after barrel after barrel after barrel. You know, and, and, and yeah. so they know what they're talking about. Right. You know? yeah, right. Yeah. Right. You work at Pillsbury. It's like the best. Fucking wine job in the world. <laughs> it's yeah. fun working with Sam. And it's it's got fun working so with many Sam. amazing yeah. people there who've been there a long time and just really. I have make three, the difference. three managers of my of my three managers of Cottonwood, Phoenix, and Tucson are all women, and the collective years those three women have been with me is twenty eight years. Wow. Oh, I know. He's got like how many girlfriends do you have? Like a dozen. Oh, dozens. <laughs> <laughs> I wish. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sam's like. Sp- Whoa! Oh. Oh. Opa. That's the only thing about crystal wine glasses. Yeah, that's okay. Let's cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, you are so much fun. Of course, everybody that starts working with you stays. I mean, because why would anybody leave? Well, I'm. I'm. I'm I, 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 I try. I, I run a non-hierarchical business. Now, clearly, that's a little bit of a fantasy because I'm obviously the owner and the boss. But right. we don't have s- status and regimes and class and everything. Everybody's a participant. Anyone has an idea, we listen. Anyone can try anything they want. I, I remember um, a few years ago with, with a distributor that I was working with, we had a, a famous um, Oregon winemaker from France come in and um, pour our wines for his wines for us. And one of the people asked him, what is your motto? And he said, he said, don't fuck up. And everybody laughed. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone laughed their asses off. So after he left, I just said, I just want everybody to know my motto is don't be afraid to fuck up. There because, you go. Because yeah. that's, that. that's how you discover shit that nobody's Nobody ever can do. Yeah, yep. right. I love that. And you said that to all your employees. Yes, and I don't, don't, don't make the same mistake 
you know, three times in a row, but don't right, worry right, about right. making a mistake because you know how many things have been invented by mistake. There's like a thousand, you know, right. air conditioning, friggin' post it stickers, you name it. Well, we've got two or three wines that were invented by mistake too. Like something bad happened, everyone said, What are we going to do? I said, Oh, let's try this. Let's, let's try, try this. this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, think, Oh, no one would have thought of this shit. You know, really <laughs> so, what's on? That's why the only way to actually master a task is just by doing because you learn from those mistakes. Yeah, no, of course. And, yeah. and that's the whole thing. You don't learn anything from a success. You learn from a mistake. <laughs> that applies, that that applies yeah. with my music production. Oh, like, yeah, I've sure. had songs where like I was just experimenting and I, you know, put this note in this spot and I didn't think it was going to come in anything and I hear it and I'm like oh wait that's amazing so it's the same kind of process it's, where you can just happen to find the right you know chord progression it, that sounds amazing oh, oh Charlie I, I've, I've done that too I've, I've played in bands um, the, the the thing that's um, I'll tell two I'll try to tell two stories quite quickly about mistakes and the first one is we've got time okay is um it's all about you we got we time start, we got one we start, we've got time we start, and we've got one we started we tend to start picking way before sunrise because I want to finish picking yeah. before it gets hot it, it's not good for the grapes to come in warm and it's not good for people to get hot after lunch because they slow down you know mm -hmm. so we're starting at 3am 3, 3 with uh, miners lamps and uh I started this, I, for some reason I couldn't stay, I had to go to the winery get, to get ready for the fruit to come in and weigh it and everything. I, I, um, I started the crew on this one block that we have where there's four different varieties growing in that block. Most of my blocks have just, have all one variety or maybe they're split down the middle. There's like 1,500 vines in each block. So I have, I have uh, Chardonnay, Sen uh, Symphony, Malvasia, and a little bit of Pinot Gris in this one. Look, when I started them on the symphony, and I said, start here, and when you get to the end of the road, go that way. Well, well, I tested this fruit at 23 bricks, and it came in at 17. Now, you can easily be one or two points off, because you're just, like I say, every vine has a different sugar, sugars and mm -hmm. stuff in it. So, so I don't know quite what to do. And everyone, you know, so I said, well, just, you know, just ferment it, put it in the tank, and we'll see. And then a couple of days later, I was walking through the vineyard. I saw they, they went to the wrong variety. They, they went. They turned right instead of left uh, at the end uh, of the road. Oh no! And um, so everyone says, "Well, what are we going to do?" And I said, "Well, just ferment it dry, and we'll see. We'll figure something out." I mm -hmm. think um, you can actually make a wine from from seventeen bricks fruit. By the way, yeah. nobody ever does in this country, but you could, mm -hmm. and it happens. Um, anyway, um, so then with the end, towards the end of our blending session, the next year, we. Made up the, the only way we can make a wild child white because what I do is I I, use, I, I make the varietal and the high end wines mm -hmm. all first from the fruit and then with the leftovers I make wild child white and wild child red and it doesn't I don't dump it we still blend right we've won double golds for our wild child in, oh, fact, yeah. in fact for this one what I'm talking about yeah. we got a double gold for it anyway so we came we had this wild child white blend but it was it had a little bit of residual sugar and it was too high in alcohol mm -hmm. everyone said what are we gonna do and I said. Put that 17 bricks motherfucker. There you go. Oh, oh, it's very oh. Double gold San Francisco oh, corner. There you go. Too smart. So you had one that was to this. This is the, the balance yeah. it out perfectly. Oh. And this is where the art comes in. Well, okay, I will. Yeah. I will admit this is where that. The creative <laughs> no, process. no, no. Ble blending, yeah, right. I think, could be an art because it's so counterintuitive. Yeah. I'll tell you two more yeah. quick stories about blending. One of them was <clears throat> we used Syrah in four blends. So we'd finished doing our Syrah varietal and our other Syrah blends, and we were left with these four barrels. I think I told you this story. And every time we tried to put any bit of any one of those barrels in one of these bands, it made it worse. Mm. So they're sitting there, and I says, what are we <laughs> I call them orphans, and I was sitting there, and I said, what do we do, Sam? I said, try blending them all together. Just, Gold uh, barrel, uh, San Francisco uh, product. Right, right, right. <laughs> Four wines that work yep. what they need to be. Yep. That's what, and I, that's what I love about like the Meritage, is like the, oh, the, yeah. the blends. Because the winemaker has so much more latitude you, you, to create something. And, 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 and you know, what we do is we blind taste every barrel. Like, mm -hmm. we like 300 barrels, we'll blind taste each one, we'll make notes about all the different So, yeah, so you're not, pre, pre, you don't have preconceived notions no, no, about the variety. No, no, but right? I'll tell you what happens. And you just say, okay, let's make our best Syrah possible. Mm -hmm. So you take the, the, the 12 best barrels of Syrah and blend them together. Doesn't taste like anything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pull yep. two of those best barrels out and throw a couple of the crappy ones in. Bingo! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's so so yeah. it's really counterintuitive. And I'll tell you one more story about blending. Um, we we want to hear all your we, stories. We've had so much luck with our wines, and and um, and I didn't know this at the time. 
because of not having enough money, we don't have enough of anything. So we, we didn't have enough equipment and enough facilities to pick all the straw in one day, which, mm -hmm. which, we, which was, I think most people do, a lot of people do. So we would pick each variety in, at a different level of ripeness. <clears throat> now, what that enables me to do is that when I'm doing my blending, we have, mm. we have not, not only is every barrel different, mm -hmm. taste different, but every level of ripeness produces a different kind of fruit too. So you can, you have a massive library to source for how you make so it. So it's like a, an artist so, palette, right? In a, in a way. Right? Because yeah. you're, you're taking yeah. a little bit of this now, and you're throwing with a little bit of now, that. Now, this is an all it done by instinct. It's mm -hmm. done by taste. You don't do it by numbers. Mm -hmm. You're done by smell and taste. No, this is a really funny thing. Another thing that I just read recently, like this thing about the UV, was um, these really rich guys decided they were going to try to figure out what makes the really great wines on, on the planet great. So they put, they got like 10 or 20 of the greatest wines ever made and they sent them to the lab. Guess what the lab discovered? What? Every single one of them had their fruit picked at different levels of ripeness. Interesting. Interesting. So there was no... Interesting. Yeah. I mean, it was yeah. something that I did because I because right. I didn't know better and I didn't have enough money. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so it wasn't you did it out of necessity, yeah. but it turns yeah. out that that makes it more complex. It sounds like. Oh, no, there's no question. It's it's oh. huge. I mean, when you're blending, when you have all these different levels of ripeness, every barrel tastes different. So you have the, right. you have like if you have 24 barrels of Syrah, each one of them tastes different. It gives yeah. you this massive amount of, yeah. of, of, of stuff to play around mm -hmm. with. It can takes make, a long time. So one of the main themes, do it, the right, way. right. Say so one of the main themes from our show today should yeah. definitely be: don't be afraid to make mistakes, and don't be afraid to experiment and try new things because you might find that next blend or that next song it's, that's perfect. It, there's two reasons why mm. I do it. One of them is, be, um, well, the main reason is out of ignorance. The other reason is not having enough money, <laughs> you know. But um, I can't remember the third reason. I've still got. But you don't want all the wines to be identical. No, Wait, no, let's, no. Uh, let's well, get a little know. introduction to this Syrah. Oh, yeah. yes. Speaking, yes. Of, yes. speaking what, what of this? Syrah. Here we go. Here it is. This. Now this is a this, this. is oh oh I know what the last thing I was gonna say is um the guy that said don't F up yeah. Well, he was working for a really big guy. He wasn't the boss, and some of their wine was in these huge tanks. And if you fuck up a ten thousand gallon there's, tank of wine, there's a serious problem. Yeah, yeah. If you fuck up a barrel of wine, you can kind of deal with yeah, it. Right, right, so right, I'll right, give exactly. him give him a break there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so this, this is Romano Syrah. Yeah. This is named after the vineyard manager that worked for me for fifteen years, planted all my vines, and he got. We were we were removing a beehive from under the tasting room. And he got stung 12 times and he oh died before he could get to the hospital because he had oh, an anaphylactic no. reaction. Oh, yeah. So oh, we no. named this mm. one after him. It's a Syrah, and it's an unusual one, actually. It is. Um, it's got a very sweet oh, nose yes. for a Syrah. Right. Yeah, well, I don't make... It's really funny because I grow this Aussie clone six of Shiraz, but I don't make a Shiraz style. I don't want mm. that oak and that oak, oak right. brightness and stuff, so I make it more in a French no, style. No, there's a lot of, like, raspberry, yeah. sweet raspberry. This is interesting because... Not all the Romeros have this blend, but what we did on this particular year, do you, do you, you know what a coat roti is, don't you? No. Okay. Oh, that's another interesting story. <laughs> so you basically named this, I just read the back, you named it after, after, after Romero. And, 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 and he died, that's so special. Yeah, well, we we have so, we so, have um, Malvasia Bonnie Lee. She died of cancer when she was working for me. And so, so do you have to die to name a bottle up? Come and work for me first. You know, <laughs> we'll see if we can knock you off. Um, <laughs> you too. You <laughs> like that little bottle. We've been trying for years. So I don't know. <laughs> okay. so, so this is a, this is a sister wine to a Syrah that I make called Guns and Kisses. Mm -hmm. I love this wine and Guns, Guns, Guns and Kisses. Kisses is an experiment that I made, and I'll try to tell you the story. Mm. Cote Roti, in French, the rough translation of Cote Roti means burnt hills. So I saw I saw this name on a bottle mm. of wine that had a, a whole bunch of them at $250 wow. price match, and I thought, burnt hills, that sounds like my place. Let me give it a try. So we tried it. <laughs> and what you do is you co-ferment Syrah with a little bit of Viognier. Interesting. And I have a theory about how that happened. I mean, mm -hmm. It happened because some farmer planted grapes and they needed a field blend, and everyone said, this tastes really great. Right. What did you do? You know, okay. So what happens is there's something in the Viognier that changes the chemical structure of the Syrah. It actually makes it more delicate. Right. But it's different from a blend. A go mm -hmm. from it is when you, you put all those grapes together right. in a tank. You don't, you know, you don't just mix them. them and then taste them later. And so I thought I'll give this a try. So I... <laughs> and... and 
because I thought it was really good, and because we only had like 24 cases or something, I, what I'll do, people ask me how I price my, price my wines. There's two reasons. How good do I think it is and how much do I have? Mm -hmm. If I think it's great and I have a thousand cases, that's cheap. If I think it's really good and I have 24 cases, I'll charge, I'll charge a heap for it. Right, so, right, right. so I put a, 20, a $74 price tag on it, and when I entered it in the Chronicle, the San Francisco Chronicle, that put it in the most expensive Syrah category in that competition, which is the biggest, most respected competition mm -hmm. in the country, 7,000 entries, okay? Yeah. Well, I, they, I heard back, they said, oh, you just got a double gold for your, for your guns and kisses. And I, so I called her, I said, look, what's a double gold, you know? They, mm -hmm. She said, no, it's not two gold medals. It's when all judges in a blind tasting give it a gold medal. Oh, wow. And, so a double, know, oh, that's So when you wild. see 95 points, that's one judge. Wow. When, you see gotcha. a, when you see a double gold, that means maybe five judges, I think. So I said, oh, that's interesting. So tell me this, that was the most expensive star category in the country. Um, how many entries were there in that category? And they said 55. And I said, how many double golds were there? Three. Wow. So the first, the first <laughs> coat roti I ever made was one of the three top Syrahs in the United States of America. High five. <coughs> and, and we've done it four times. Mm. This is not impressive. Really. No, this, this okay, not, no, there's a reason this for this, this story. Not, this one is not really interesting. Man, so it is. has such a sweet nose, but on the palate, on dry. I'm super dry. There's yeah. no, no sweetness whatsoever. No, I was about there's to say maybe some cranberry or something like that. I was about to say the contrast between the nose and the actual and the palate, actual palate, palate is, is wild. The, the reason I told you that Guns and Kisses story is that when we made this blend that year, I had made a lot of Kofferman of Viognier and Syrah, mm -hmm. and we didn't want to make a hell of a lot of it. So what I did is when I did this this Syrah blend, I did some barrels of Syrah and some barrels that were Kofferman with Viognier. So it's got that quality. It's oh, really, really mm. yeah. So it has some it's, barrels. It's got about 30%. Oh. Oh. I taste, cool. okay, correct me if I'm wrong, I taste black currant, blackberry, it's no wrong. and it's no wrong. boysenberry. Whatever is that correct? Sure. No, honey, whatever you taste is what you taste. It's, it's not correct. correct. But you're the expert. How would you describe it? Would, I would agree with you. I'm, you would? Yeah, yeah. Chet? Mm -hmm. Chet would, a good review. <laughs> Chet would completely disagree. <laughs> oh, I actually, I agree with the current. I agree with the current. I actually, no, I was going to say current was one of the ones I would have said. Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, it's, def it's definitely not stone right. fruit, for example. No, no, it's no. It's not wet no, slate, no, you know? No, 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 not at all. No. So, let me tell you, frankly, one more funny story. I was actually doing all this all research, research on guns and kisses and cut rotis, and I suddenly realized I thought, I've been making... Making Guns and Kisses for 11 or 12 years, okay? Yeah. I have never once tasted a bottle of French Coat Rotate. And I've got four really? double golds. Wow. <laughs> you do have four. Wow. <laughs> How many bottles we need to of cross that off your bucket Kisses list, do you have then. left? Oh, we have all, we have almost every vintage. But I mean, like, well, we charge one hundred and twenty dollars for it now, right. so it doesn't go out the door. Really mm -hmm. quickly, and it's just sitting there. I know? think you should charge more. I think. Well, we, we, we'll see. You know. You know, I think you should. Really it's probably the only wine charge. we make any money out of. <laughs> well, I, I mean, your collectors and the people that love you, they this, have this, the money. They'll pay whatever. This should age. It, yeah. It's absolutely. Well, check out. The, Martin, t pick up that bottle. Look at on the back and tell me what the alcohol content is. Are you going to make me read? <laughs> 12 and a half. Can you believe it? Or maybe. So if you buy I mean, a case 12 .6, my, my, 12 my of yeah. Guns and Kisses. That's, that's, what, that, that's what I like my reds. Some telling. of my reds are at 14 and a half. Yeah. Sure. I like doing lower alcohol and I pick early. But I'm going to tell you something. We blind taste our, our, our blends. Mm -hmm. And if it, if it, if if I make the best possible wine out of all those barrels and it comes in at fourteen point five, that's what it is. Because I'm not doing right, it by yeah. the numbers, I'm mm -hmm. doing it by taste. But more or less, we're like eleven and a half, twelve mm -hmm. and a half, thirteen and a half. Yeah. That's very tasty. That is a very it is tasty so wine. delicious. It's, so you don't have to have a high alcohol wine to have some fruit mm -hmm. and some mm -hmm. some structure mm -hmm. and yeah. balance and you know. Yeah, because what would you pair this with? I would have to say normally Syrah is not my favorite. It seems to be more of a bland grape. It, it, oh, it's one of my favorites. Has, I love Syrah. No, well, love for Syrah. for me, but well, this is when it's mass produced. Our Syrahs. Yeah, when it's mass produced. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what that's I mean. true. No, no, we, again, everything is in barrel. It's, mm -hmm. We we don't do the shit in tanks. You know, I mean, if you look, mm -hmm. if you go to a, a really big winery and you see these great big stainless steel tanks, and that tank's got Syrah on it. That's what the fucking Syrah is going to taste like. You can't do anything with right, it anymore. Right, we yeah. have all these troublesome barrels that are a pain in the ass. They take, <laughs> they take forever to maintain. Mm -hmm. They take forever to blend, but it makes for better wine. Yeah. So, so what would you pair this with? Like, I wouldn't would you... pair. I wouldn't tend to pair it with the well, obvious, which is, a, like... which is a pan-fried steak, for example. Mm -hmm. I would tend to go for something a little more 
a, a little less strident in its in its strong flavors. Um, maybe a, a kind of some kind of beef or, or what lamb. about hamburger? If you want to, Why sure. Not? If it's a good hamburger, maybe I mean, a swordfish. This yeah, seems like I wouldn't do good. it with swordfish. No? No, 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 I would do my my chardonnay with swordfish. <laughs> but I oh, would do okay. this with something like a, with duck for sure. Oh, they're good. good okay, one. that's Absolutely. gotcha. Totally agree. Uh, 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 yeah. You know. Because the, it would really the, cut the, through that the French, fatty uh, duck. Yeah. You know, the French dish with duck and bean, the cassoulet. Mm -hmm. and, and, and also um, the, the raw, raw red meat. What do they call that? Um, what? Prime red? No, no, French raw red meat. That's minced up. What's it called? Oh, uh, foie, 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 no, no, that, that's, that's liver. Oh. oh, come on. Raw yeah. red meat? Oh, raw meat, it's a French yeah, yeah, yeah. meat. No, no, no. We now can't think of it. Oh, come on, Richard, what is it? Now you got me going. I, yeah. know I don't eat it, but word. what is it called? It's a uh, tartare. Uh, tartare. Oh, 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 you did it. I said that. Oh, you did. did. Oh, yeah, good, yeah. good boy. Okay. Yeah, Chet's ch ch a, a foodie. Yeah, this, okay, this would work with it. this one's a foodie. Okay, no, good. I mean, he never does anything. Are you kidding me? I mean, the fastest food he does is Uber Eats from like a five-star restaurant. I will say, to be honest with everybody, this 2020... Uh, Romero's is a one-off. The mm -hmm. 21 does not have any coat roti blend in it. So oh, okay. It's it's, mm. uh, it's good, but it's I don't think it's quite as good as the <laughs> okay. So you're saying this is the best? It's, it's, I think it's, it's pretty good. It is the best. I, I love it. You, I love you it. can take Syrah, which is a very popular grape in France, of mm -hmm. course. Um, even in, within France, you can take a Syrah from the northern Rhone part, what that's all they plant, mm -hmm. is Syrah. That's where coat rotis come from. Yeah, that's right. where coat roti yeah. comes from. Or the southern Part or you know, and they're going to taste different. Mm -hmm. You know, d depending on the terroir or the clone of the grape. Some Syrahs are real earthy and and and. Um, you See, know, this isn't this, particularly this, earthy. No, it's as not. A, as this a is a no, different yeah. style yeah. of Syrah. Yeah. I, I, which is, I, I haven't which dabbled is, much in the Syrahs, like it, so this is interesting. We, we, I have some huge, earthy Syrahs too, like mm -hmm. the twenty. A lot of different styles of Syrah. Uh, Wild child red, yeah, mm -hmm. earth and leather, you know. Yeah, yeah, you've, you've brought that one here before, I I'm pretty so. sure. Wait, what, because I remember the leather one. Red. Oh, you've brought that here before. Yeah, yeah. That was the first, okay. Some Shiraz, you the way a we met. to them, you know. <laughs> a a friend, stank, of, yeah, like, do you guys want to hear how we met? A friend of Don't ours. Don't tell them everything. I, I, oh, God. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they can't know anything. We won't tell them anything. But uh, a little snippet we can give them is a friend of ours, uh, brought all of your wines, like three wines, to an all-girl wine tasting. And, uh... A friend who's a neighbor, by any chance? <laughs> and, what, and was Sam the stripper? <laughs> well, wait, so, so, so my, I'm my speedo, so he's okay. <laughs> wait, this is kind of a funny story. So my ex and I were going through a divorce, and I had, my friend had won a wine tasting event, and we were still living together. And my friend had the wine tasting event at my place, and it was all girls. And I somehow asked this person to stop by for this wine tasting because he likes wine. And he brought three of your wines to this wine tasting oh, event wow. and a bunch of food. And that's how, you know. Well, the really the real leather Syrah is the is I think is the twenty one mm -hmm. Wild yeah. so it's fairly recent. So or the twenty, buys, I think it's the twenty mm -hmm. actually. If somebody buys a case of that Guns and Kisses. Mm. Where can they get that? Because is that at the winery? Oh, you can only get them at the at the winery, or okay. or, or call, call go online and ask for it. But we do sell cases of it. In twenty one during COVID, we were we were selling twelve of that yeah. shit out the door. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. Like, yeah. We actually made a profit for that. The was your, that was your road. best year ever. Yeah, wasn't no it? kidding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It didn't last long either. <laughs> <laughs> we broke on our ass again. Yeah. So, are there any up and coming wine tasting events or dinners that people? Well, what are you going to do one at the Mick? Um, December and we're doing one you are. next month at Genuine. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, and where's Genuine? What's, well, that's a taste thing. Well, you gonna food there? No, too? no, no. Wine dinners. A wine dinner at Genuine. Yeah. At Genuine at the that? end of end of November, and then we're oh, doing a so wine dinner. Do they have it catered or something? No, no. Genuine is is the, the Vig Group. Jeremy Pacheco runs all that. He used oh, to be the chef. The genuine. Oh, okay. It's called Genuine. Oh, no, it's a, no. it's a new thought, restaurant. I thought you meant the wine tasting place, Genuine. No, 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 no. Oh, no, 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 no. No, I know the one you mean. I know the one you mean. That's the new one. It's, it's, it's just up. It's, it's on 16th just, Street. It's just up from and Bethany. From, uh, it was Phoenix a big, City Grill. Jerry oh, so I'm going to put you on the spot. I want to do a wine tasting dinner. Genuine. 
at one of my at, at my place. Well, wait, we're, we're, we're about to we run out of time, so let's finish uh, but promoting we're going to his new you like a wine taste. dinner where people come for charity, uh, and you just pour I'm the gonna, wine. I'll have to work out the parameters. Okay. Okay, okay, so we'll talk about I can't that just tell you a number right now. Okay, we'll, I mean, we'll a minimum of five, One million dollars. A minimum, a minimum, <laughs> minimum of 500. Okay, okay. It depends on how many. That's 500,000. That's right. <laughs> right. One million. One million dollars. Well, it was awesome having you in the studio again. If you're listening, uh, go buy local wine. Oh, go buy Sam Pillsbury wines. Thank you. Go buy uh, it tastes amazing, wine that and is the best. And, and it's also organic and it's healthy. And you're also... It's also vegan. <laughs> it's and, also and, vegan. No, yeah, no beef product, byproduct. No, right. Well, people sometimes use egg... Egg, egg uh, whites for egg, fighting. Egg whites stuff for like fighting. That. We yeah, don't yeah. find yeah. our end. No so kidding. There's, yeah. so there's, right. there's yeah. no end. So, I mean, also most wines are vegan, bladder. but they won't... They right. won't yeah, or fish bladder. Yeah. Fish bladder. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Yeah. What? So, you know, what it does is it clings to some of the particles if the wine's cloudy and they drop to the bottom. But we don't ever have cloudy reds. Our reds roll up. Okay, well. Mm -hmm. oh, that's interesting. I'm ner learning new disturbing things every day. <laughs> <laughs> well, me, me too, buddy. Right, right. <laughs> so in closing, what, yeah, what, what, where do you see you your wine going in the next couple of years? Like, do you see a wine? Uh, you mentioned that your wines can be kind of, was it, what was that word you used? Slutty? Slutty? Wait, we're over 55 I minutes. Let's I believe it was show. promiscuous. Saving the planet. Promiscuous. We're not having one called promiscuous. One promiscuous. We do. We do. We have a red called promiscuous. Yeah. Uh, we've tried it. Yeah. We've got to bring that next time. Yes, we've had it before. It won a huge medal. I don't think I've tried that. We've tried that on, yeah, in the yeah, show before. Have we? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, we'll, we'll uh, keep drinking Sam Pillsbury's wine and go to his website and go check out his yeah. wine tasting room and saving the planet. One, One show, show at a time. time. Happy birthday.